Hey everyone, in today's video, I just want to share with you how I approached upgrading my five year old Unify controller running on DigitalOcean, an actual production controller with about 35 client sites on it, over to a new updated DigitalOcean droplet. All right, so these are the steps that I put together. They made sense to me in this logical order. First step, I can't stress enough, is preparation. So the first thing I did was take a backup of the existing controller. From that point, once I had that backup, I went in and I upgraded all of the devices across all 35 client sites, made sure they were running the latest firmware. And then the other thing that made sense to me was get the controller updated to the same version that you would be moving to in the new droplet. So that said, from that point then, oh, and then obviously when all that was done, take a backup of the controller at that point. And I used settings only option, and I'll show you that when we get into the video. Then create the new DigitalOcean droplet. Once the new droplet was created and it issued an IP address, at that point then I changed my DNS settings because I'm using an FQDN. So I pointed the FQDN to the new IP address of the new controller. And then I went ahead and I ran the Unify install script that I got from Glenn R. And Willie Howe at one point shared it with me as well. The reason I did it in this order was because by the time I got through the Unify installation, that gave the DNS enough time to propagate and we were able to just go in at the end of the Unify installation and restore the backup file, which is the next step. And then finally, I installed my SSL certi certificate. And basically I had a backup copy of my key store on my local hard drive. So I just copied it to user slash lib slash unify slash data over on the new server. Now I copied it, I use a Mac, so I copied it with uh, FileZilla, but if you're on Windows, you can use WinSCP. Okay, that said, let me get started with the process. Let's make the backup of the existing controller. So the first step was preparation. So here we are, we're signed into the existing controller. Now, this is a lab setup. This is controller A. So if we come up here, you can see I have test site A and test site B. Currently we're in test site A. And if I come over to the unified devices, you can see the only thing I have in test site A is an access point. And under best practices and preparation, you can see I've updated the firmware to the latest version. And then I did the same for test site B. If I come down to the devices, you can see here I have an access point and one of the original US 860 watt switches. And again, you can see that I have both of them up to date. The firmware version of this controller is version 7.3.83, so it's up to date. So let's go ahead and grab the backup file. So we're gonna come down to system. We're gonna come over to backups. We'll click on show more. And we're just gonna click on download to generate the backup for this controller. And we're gonna say settings only and click on download. All right, so we have a successful Unify backup of the existing controller. Okay, now the next step was to create the new DigitalOcean droplet. So I'm signed into my DigitalOcean account. And by the way, if you want a DigitalOcean account and you want to receive some credit, I have a link down to my DigitalOcean affiliate link down in the description below. I don't care that you see the IP address of the existing controller. It's just a test controller here in the lab. And by the time you see this video, this will all be destroyed. So what we're going to do now is create the new droplet for the new controller. So we'll come up and we'll say create droplet. Here we can pick our region. So I'm just gonna pick the region that's closest to me, which is New York. I want the Ubuntu image. We're gonna leave the version to the latest Ubuntu image, which is 22.10. Now, as far as the droplet size, you have different sizes here. I'm gonna go with the regular type. And it's also recommended to go with at least a minimum of two gig, but I'm going to go with the one gig just for the purpose of this demonstration, it'll be just fine. So I'm gonna click the $6 a month option. 
And then down here, instead of using a password, I'm just going to use one of my existing SSH keys to create the controller. So we'll go with this one here. And then we'll scroll down to the final step and I'll just call this unify test B. We'll click on create droplet. And now you can see here it's in the process of creating the droplet. In a minute, it'll give us the IP address. Okay, now you can see the droplet's been successfully created. We have an IP address here. We're going to go ahead and copy that IP address because we're going to need it in the next step where we point our FQDN to this new address. The next step in the process is to change the DNS settings for the FQDN. So I am signed into my GoDaddy account. This is where I purchased the domain and this is where I manage its DNS. Now this may vary for you, it may differ, so you need to follow whatever process is appropriate to you. So here is the unified test A. We are going to come over and click on the edit pencil. This is the address of the previous controller. I want to now copy and paste the address of the new digital ocean droplet that we just created and go ahead and click on save. It's updating the record. We have the success and that's all there is to it. Now this will take a few minutes to propagate, but by the time we get through the unify installation in the next step, this should be good to go. The next step in the process is to install Unify on the new droplet. Now, I'm already signed in to the droplet via SSH, and I'm going to use an installation script by a gentleman by the name of Glenn R. Now, he's very popular in the Ubiquity forums. I think at one point he even worked for Ubiquity. I'm not sure if he still does. He supplied this script. In fact, Willie Howe even forwarded this script script to me a while back. So this is the script I'm using. It's going to be a one line command that's going to take you through the entire process of installing Unify, setting up the Mongo database and all of the other dependencies that the Unify controller requires. So that said, I will include a link to Glenn's page down in the description below. The first thing I do want to do though, before we run the installation script is just to make sure that the new droplet is completely up to date. So we'll do that. And now it's going out and it's just checking for updates and it will install them. Okay, that didn't take too long. And as you saw, I just accepted all of the defaults on the prompts. Now, keep in mind, while this was updating, the DNS has been propagating in the background because we did that in a previous step. So now it's time to go out to Glenn's site and copy the command and start the installation of the Unify controller. So we'll scroll down to here and we're just gonna take this line right here. Make sure you copy the entire line. And we'll go back into our terminal app and we're going to just paste it in and hit enter. And here it says, welcome to the easy Unify network application install script. And it's just going to take you through the process. Now I might not run the whole process in front of you online. I'll let it run through so it completes, but it's going to take you through installing net tools. It's going to take you through, the Mongo database setup. After it gets through all of the supporting files, it will then finally install Unify and I will come back when it is complete. Okay, so now Unify has been successfully installed. You can see Glenn's information here. In fact, I'll put all this down in the video description if you're interested in, in getting a hold of this script. You can see Unify is actively running and we're on the new controller, test B. So what we're going to do now is we should be able to go out to the 
fully qualified domain name because DNS should be propagated by now. We should be able to pull up the new controller. And if we can, then the next step in the process is to restore the backup file. Okay, we've made it to the Unify Setup page, but we're not gonna go through the wizard and create the six steps. Instead, we're going to click on Restore Setup from Backup, and then we're gonna come up here and upload the file that we have saved on our computer. And that's in my Downloads folder, and it is right here. We're gonna go ahead and say Open. And then it's just asking us to confirm that we wanna restore from the backup. I'm going to click Confirm. And it says backup restoration is in progress. Your network application will reboot during this process. So we'll give this a few minutes and we'll be right back. Okay, the restoration process has completed and here we are at the sign in page for the Unify controller. So let's go ahead and get signed in. Okay, so we're successfully signed into the controller now and we should have our two test sites test site A and test site B. So if I go over to the devices, hopefully they have provisioned and are online. And there you go. You can see we have the little green dot. Status is online, so we are good to go. Let's go over to test site B and come over to the devices. And you can see both the access point and the US 860 watt switch are online. Okay, so you could see that following those steps that I outlined earlier at the beginning of the video, we were able to move a five-year-old Unify controller. It was actually running Ubuntu 16.04 over to a new droplet that's running Ubuntu 22.10. So that said, the next step in the process would be to um, install or copy over your key store so that you have your SSL certificate in place on the new controller. Now, I'm not going to do that because again, this was a lab setup just to demonstrate those steps for you. However, I do wanna show you what I'm talking about even though I'm not going to do it. So let me switch over to the computer. And here we're looking at FileZilla and I'm already signed into the Unify controller. Now I had mentioned earlier that you wanna copy the key store over to user.lib.unify.data and when I program that into FileZilla, it just redirected to this path right here, var.lib.unify. But in any event, here is the key store file right here. And this is my actual production controller that I'm showing you this on. So if I follow the next step in the process, I would delete this file right here. Then I would go over to the left side to my local computer, search for the backup copy where I have the key store stored and then simply take it and then just drag it over to the Unify controller droplet. So that said, that is all there is to getting your SSL certificate back up and running on the new controller. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out the other videos that I list here up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I wanna thank you as I do in every video for using the Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. Once again, my name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.